so a problem I checked it out I think this is the one you guys gonna stack so let's do implicit differentiation one more problem and this is going to be example number three probably the last one unfortunately I can keep showing more examples but uh, at some point you just have to do it by yourself you have to start working on this by yourself and this is the one with a huge square root x to the 4 plus y squared equals 4x plus 8y cubed and you know the question is all the same find dy over dx this notation dy over dx tells you which one is a dependent variable and which one is independent variable today we're going to start a new topic about related rates and we will have three rates there two related and the third one is independent variable so this notation is important okay i just need to differentiate right like how how hard that can be and the beginning the beginning is challenging so usually students stuck at the beginning step one so i gave you steps step one says differentiate both sides if you, you cannot solve for y and you don't want to, let's not solve for y. Let's just differentiate both sides right away. Find the derivative. Okay, before differentiating, I see there's a square root and then something is inside. And whatever is inside, both are variables now. X is a variable and Y is a variable. One is independent, the other one is dependent. So that's a chain rule. The function outside is a square root. You're differentiating something to, this, to the one half. What is going to happen one half goes down the to the negative one half. Exactly. What's inside though? X to the four plus y squared. X to the four plus y squared. Excellent. This is the biggest question. Should I mul multiply by y prime inside or outside? Remember what Channel says. Do not touch the piece inside until you finish differentiating the function outside. So you copy it. It's there. Don't touch it. Then chain rule says, now you can look inside. I'm looking inside and I see x to the 4 plus y squared. And I'm differentiating x to the 4 plus y squared. X, x is the normal guy. Y is the not normal guy. Every time you're differentiating x, it follows normal properties we learned. Power rule, quotient rule, and so on. Every time you differentiate y, it follows those rules, but then times y prime. So y prime pops out every time you differentiate y. Following this idea, it will be times x to the 4 gives you 4x cubed. Good job. y squared, though, gives you 2y y prime or dy over dx if you want. y prime is just faster to write. dy over dx is good too, but on the test, you know, you have to be fast. So I do y prime notation right away, and then you, I know many of you will do it on the test faster this way. Questions, this is the hardest part. Did you get this part? <coughs> the function outside times the derivative of the function inside. Not the end, differentiate right hand side. 4x gives you 4 plus 8y cubed squared. Done or not? Y prime. Yeah? Y squared. Yeah? Derivative of y is y prime. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of y is y prime. Let's look at this for a little bit. Tell me, what do you think? Not too bad. So that's the first step. I think the first step is the hardest one. After this, I told you, identify pieces which have multiplies y primes. Collect them on the one side, everything else on the other side. But this step is complicated in this example because I need this piece 2y y prime and I need this piece 24y square y prime. The 24y square y prime is fun. I'm just going to move it to the left, not a big deal. But the first piece is inside of the parentheses, so I cannot just take it out. I have to distribute first, so it's just extra step. Make sense? Just extra step which we're going to call distribution, distribute. Distribute. By distributing, I mean I will multiply this whole piece 
by 4x cubed and then by 2y, y prime. That's what I mean. So it's going to be 1 half x to the 4 plus y squared negative 1 half times 4x cubed plus, let's repeat again, 1 half x to the 4 plus y squared to the negative one half times, and that's the piece I actually need, 2y, y prime, distributed. Do you all agree? Distributed. <coughs> Carefully distributing this, you can simplify two and one half, four and one half. We're gonna do that in a second, but don't forget the right hand side. Just copy it. Equals four, 4 plus 24y squared times y prime. Make sense? Ask me what do you see. Careful distributing it. Now I can completely identify parts which are multiplied by y prime. This huge piece is multiplied by y prime and the piece on the right hand side. I move everything to the left hand side. You can flip if you want, you can move to the right hand side. I like moving to the left and then everything else, just garbage, move it to the right and don't touch it until the last, uh, last step. So step two, we distribute it, but let's do step three then. Move to the left hand side, pieces with y prime. It's going to be, okay, let's simplify. I don't like this one half all the time. Two and one half simplifies. Four and one half becomes two. So I will have x to the 4 plus y squared to the negative 1 half times y times y prime minus 4 minus 24y squared y prime equals. So those are two orange pieces. Two pieces in orange. I move to the left and then the piece on the left hand side should go to the right. It's going to be negative 2x cubed x to the 4 plus y squared, negative 1 half. <coughs> this is what I'm working right now. 4. Oh, this is the one. This one? Yeah, I just moved with a negative. So every time what I do, I do negative 4, negative 24, y squared, y prime. Make sense? That's why it has minus 4, minus 24, y squared, y prime. Mm -hmm. And on the right hand side, 4 cancelled out with 1 half, so now it's 2. But since we're moving, it's negative 2, negative 2x cubed. Make sense? I just moved this piece to the front because it looks better this way. Almost last step. Identify with some kind of another color y primes and factor it out. Some students can handle to do this step right away when they move everything to the left. You can do it, not a big deal. If you can do it, just do it carefully. Y prime brackets. And now carefully factoring out means you're dividing by this piece. So whatever stays will be x to the 4 plus y squared to the negative 1 half times y. That's the first piece. Oh, wait, negative 4. Oh, that's why you're asking, that we don't need it. You're right. Did you guys notice? I don't need this negative 4. Why it's here? <coughs> This, this negative 4, this 4 doesn't have y prime. The piece with y prime is only 24. Yes, 24. So let's keep 4 on the right-hand side. Oh, okay, good point. That's what you meant. 4 on the right-hand side because 4 is not multiplied by y prime. Then I can, do you know how I noticed like right now? Because when I'm factoring y prime, 4 doesn't have y prime to factor out. So you're like, I don't need it. If you don't need it, move it to the right. That's why I like calling garbage. Like it's not important until the last moment. Let's minus twenty-four y squared. Close the brackets. Y prime was factored. Then the right hand side. Don't touch it yet. And we're almost done. Implicit differentiation idea is differentiate left hand side, right hand side. And when you differentiate, every time you see y, y prime pops up. Collect pieces with y prime, factor them out, divide by those brackets, 
to isolate, isolate y prime. y prime equals right hand side over the brackets, 4 minus 2x cubed times x to the 4 plus y squared to the negative 1 half. All over those brackets, x to the 4 plus y squared to the negative 1 half y minus 24 y squared. This is the answer, even though I checked in your homework, that's not what they say the answer is. So I will show you one more step, but technically speaking, this is good. Reminding you again, the new idea of implicit differentiation, your answer includes both x and y, input and output. Because we differentiated implicitly, we never solved for y directly, explicitly. So the answer will give us some kind of implicit answer as well. Y prime, what is the rate of change of y? The, rate, the instantaneous rate of change is this, whatever you see in, in this fraction. It includes input and output. Very interesting idea. Your homework problem wants to multiply by left-hand side and right-hand side by this huge uh, square root. So they said, you know, we don't like negative one half. Let's multiply. And when they did that, so we're going to multiply by x to the 4 plus y squared 1 half. But you cannot multiply only the top. You have to multiply the bottom as well. Why they decided to do that? Because negative 1 half plus 1 half is 1. <coughs> Oh, no, no, they just uh, multiplied. Yeah, okay, that's good. Four. That's basically square root. So now, right now, you will see how the square root is going to pop out everywhere. Uh, negative one half plus one half is zero. X, x to the four plus y squared to the zero is one. So this piece will be one, and this piece will be one. That's what they wanted to do. Who knows why? I actually don't see a big difference in the answer. They probably think that negative exponent is not nice. I don't know. I know, yes. 4 times x to the 4 plus y squared to the 1 half. And 1 half can be written as a square root. And that's how they present the answer there. Minus 2x cubed times 1 over y minus 24y squared times the square root again x to the 4 plus y squared. Both are good answers. That's why I'm going to put or. You know, you don't have to do that. Or. Implicit differentiation, some kind of challenging uh, examples. Challenging examples. For you to understand, the challenging part here was a chain rule. So if I give you the same function, but instead of the square root, it's going to be sine, the same idea. One of the examples, I'm just going to do the first step. Example four, just the first step. Because I think you can handle all the other steps just fine. But the first step throws people off and uh, you just freak out. If not, then it's good. But if yes, this is the same idea. I saw this example in your homework. Instead of the square root of the function, you have sine of the function. Idea is still the same. It's chain rule. Chain rule says, look at the function outside first. The function outside is sine. So instead of this 1 half going down to the negative, neg to, to the negative 1 half, now I will have cosine, right? So when I'm differentiating, I will have cosine of copy. Don't touch the inner part. Remember, you cannot touch it yet. It's like a, a computer game. You cannot reach the second level until you completed the first level. Cosine of 3y times, and now channel says look, look inside and differentiate whatever you see inside. I see 3y. The derivative of 3y is, so I know the derivative of 3x is 3, but every time you see y, y prime pops up, right? You all agree? So that's that's where people make mistakes. Verse. I mean, why hmm? is a function of x a chain rule, but how chain does it explain rule. y prime? Yeah, it's chain rule. It's coming from chain rule. Very good question, but I think it's the, the only way actually to explain it is through chain rule. 
x prime is 1 based uh, actually on the power rule because 1 goes down x to the 0 is 1 but y of x is going to be derivative you first need to differentiate the function outside and we don't know what y prime is so we keep it that way we keep naming it y prime and then times derivative of the function inside function inside is x so it's times one so it's exactly comes from chain yes and we also call it dy over dx or dy where dt if the input is t or anything else so versus 5x derivative of 5x gives you just 5 because x prime is 1 versus y prime is y prime equals 2y gives you 2y prime exactly and now the process repeats you identify pieces with y prime move them to the left you can right away factor out y prime I can actually do this if you want. Uh, I saw students figure out how to do it right away. Move everything with y prime to the left and factor out y prime, create a bracket. It becomes 3 cosine 3y minus 2 equals, garbage goes to the right, that's negative 5. And then it becomes much faster, especially if you're going to take exam and you want to be fast, negative 5 all over 3 cosine. 3y minus 2. The answer follows right away. You see, I just step, I just skipped like one step. Sometimes people skip even the last step, they can divide right away. But your job is to be careful with signs. You see, it's negative 2y because when I move this piece 2y prime to the left, it becomes negative 2y prime. So I know it's going to be negative 2. If you're bad with keeping signs and everything, then don't skip steps. But this problem is not that simple. In your homework, they ask you to find second derivative. Second derivative. So we don't do this, actually, two steps. We, They wanted to differentiate one more time from the first step over here. And now you're going to have product rule and so on and so on. Or you can solve for y prime and differentiate at the end. Then you're going to have quotient rule. But they want to see, can, do you understand that it can be done several, several times? Questions, what do you think? That's the last thing I will show you in implicit differentiation. And then your job is to work on homework. Not too bad. Like the problem is, I should tell you, you see me doing it and it looks okay. You see it on the video, it looks okay. And then you do it yourself. So your job is to do it yourself many times. Close notes, close all the videos, repeat yourself until you catch all the mistakes. How to do product rule x times y y gives you y prime x gives you one and so on quotient rule and so on